Hey, hey, folks, here we are. We're here, we're queer. We got the, the Winchester, the Winston, Zetamore, uh, Wingus, Wingus um, Maxi Pad with Wings, Wingosity. Yeah, Something Wings else. TV show. Remember that on USA? Wings. With Tony Shaloub and. Uh, He's been around. The other guy, <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church. <laughs> I used to love that show. Yeah, man. That was about an airport in Cape Cod. I never watched I remember it. Oh, I watched a lot of USA. Remember USA? Up all night. No. With Rhonda Shear? Oh, man, she was hot. Damn. Did a lot oh, of Steven TV. Weber, yeah. Steven Weber. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there was the hot guy, Tim Daly. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's kind of, he's like still a hottie. Oh, yeah. It's like 70. I know, real dilf. The amount of puss he probably got off of this horrific show <laughs> is mind-boggling. Look at that, all white cast. Is that Penn from Penn and Teller? No. Who is that? Just I can't some, see. My eyes suck. Mr. Belvedere, I think. I don't know. I can't <laughs> keep up. The 90s. My dad plopped me in front of a TV, said, don't talk to me. That's, that's the American way. Yeah. I got a lot of this. I'd go, Dad, you're not going to believe what happened at school. He would go. <laughs> and, you know, as a retarded nine-year-old, you're like, all right. He caught my attention. Well, it's no shiny. different now, except it's a fucking iPad or something. Good point. Good point. I'm, I'm listening to this uh, Jonathan Haidt. You hear about this guy? No. He's a NYU professor. He's he's like cracking down on phones. He's like, phones are ruining our youth. We got to stop the social media. Um, highly recommend this guy. But I listen to a podcast with him, and there he is. Uh, and he's just he's making some great points. Looks like Epstein. <laughs> well, he's a he's a New York Jew, <laughs> but he's uh, he's look at all these books he's written. The Anxious Generation. Friends with Seinfeld. All right. Mm-hmm. You should, you should use it as an uh, icebreaker. I thought about that. I thought about going, hey, Jerry, you heard this pod yet? Oh, yeah. Little well, bodega cat. <laughs> hey, hey. Nice and early. It's uh, 8 a.m. over here in New York. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you drink hard this weekend? I did, yeah. And by the way, that guy a wreck? Jonathan Haidt? Yeah, I'll wreck height. Yeah, right. good good guy, good writer. He's got great points. Where, where were you drinking? I had a spot in Richmond. Do you hit Pearlies? I forgot about Pearlies. Oh, and... oh, sorry, Wingus. <laughs> Don't wake the dead. Me and Chris Allen were uh, driving from Richmond to Greensboro. We're like two hours in. We're like, we forgot to go to Pearlies. He likes Pearlies. He too? loves Pearlies. Right. He, he lives in D.C., so he knows the area. God, Pearlies fucking rules. So good. I've been before. Loved it. Uh, flight canceled, had to get another flight with a connection, we had to push the show an hour late, brutal. Animals. Delta, what are you doing out there? Delta's killing us. I know, they were they were the number one. Yeah. They were the best. They always fall sooner or later. Yeah, I, uh, I got loaded, I was in, I did a casino gig with uh, Chrissy D, Nemesh, Rachel. Nemesh stays like downtown, he wants to be in like a cool part. Chris and I are like, yeah, we'll do the casino, whatever. What city? Uh, we're in Prior Lake, Minnesota. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, it's a cool. It's a decent casino. I was gonna say cool. It's, it's fine. Uh, Mi Lake. Mystic Lake Casino. Okay. You know that one? I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We do that. We do a gig. Great crowd. Nemesh is like, you got to come for this chicken. We look on Uber. We're like thirty five minutes away. Oh, it's like ten thirty, and he's we're riffing on stage. He's like, I got a re I got a reservation. We're like, ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're staying in the casino, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah come so on. I was like, fuck that, and. Uh, Chris's whole family with him. His daughter's fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. She's we're, we're, really funny. We're at the airport. Chris goes, look, it's Sam. She goes, ugh. <laughs> he goes, ugh, is Nemesh going to be here too? Oh, man. I did his podcast at his house, yeah. and his daughter walked in the frame. We're all on mic, and she goes, who's that? Pointing to some guy on TV. She goes, he looks like an asshole. Oh, yeah. He lost it. <laughs> She's... Uh, She's been around a comedian too much. Yes. To the point that she now insults me nonstop. And I was like, does your kid hate me? She's like, no. She's like, it's like your term of endearment. Yeah, she's riffing. She thinks she's Rickles. <laughs> she's like nine years old. She's like, she's like look at this ugly guy. Uh. I'm like, she's, she's like, because I look bad. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, look at your teeth. What's wrong with your teeth? Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, you know. You, you got just nice got a, teeth. I just got them widened. Thanks for yeah. noticing. <laughs> uh, yeah, but she's hilarious. And then we end up uh, in D.C. We end up at, uh, we end up just going to this place, Shaw's Crab House. Mm. It's I go there every time I'm in Chicago. That's right up my anal. Well, I don't even know what it is, but I'm in. 
Veter found it originally. Yes. It's a, it's a Gary doesn't miss find. Veter can find crabs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he finds them. And I, every time I'm in one of these places, I think wow. of that Richard Jenny joke with the, the lobsters in the tank. Oh, so well, good. They, they all have that look on their face like, any word from the governor? <laughs> <laughs> Such a good bit. So good. But uh, yeah, we get loaded there it's you know with, wow his, you know his his partners with us uh jazz you know oh yeah she's We're, a good looking lady uh, <laughs> at one point at one point one flight she walks by in yoga pants and bends over and chris like points to his wife's butt like check this uh, <laughs> she does have quite the rump i used so, to follow her on instagram <laughs> i stopped are you unfollowed what you get married. You, you, you don't want to. Your you don't wife. Wanna, your wife sees who you. It, I don't want. I don't want to be looking at another guy, a friend of mine's wife, while I'm married. But when you're single, it's okay to look at his girlfriend. Yeah, I'd say yeah. so. It always weird is when you follow the ex. You like when and yes. they, and then they break up, and you're like, oh, cool, that chick that ruined my friend's life got into yoga. I guess that's, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we're at dinner. We're getting loaded. It starts with just like a round of martinis. Then it, it felt we felt like we were in Mad Men. I was like, oh. like another round of martinis. I was like, what the hell? No stopping now. We start getting loaded. Then he's like, another round. I'm like, all right, another round. Wow. We just keep doing them. We keep throwing them down. And then uh, who's and crabs too? What a fun, oh what a fun God. night. Cracking them open. You got the bib on the cocktail. Oh. It's that's the best. Good sushi there too. Everything's good there, man. Get some. The kids get their mac and cheese. It's, it's killer. It's got, it's got like a PJ Clark's type of vibe. Love but like it. Like the seafood and the and the and the good martinis so then chris was like let's go on a uh let's go on a architecture tour i'm like looking at my i'm like all right it's like at this hour it's like nine yeah yeah i'm like he's like he's like come on the kids will be into it the kids are like passed out too oh, yeah. you know yeah. we get on the boat it's like one of those boat yeah yeah it's like a river tour whoa so we get on the boat and it's a woman leading this uh and it's a woman like it's her her, it's her show so she's like mm. making jokes uh-huh and you know, not great, but we're, we're, but we're, but she's like, it's a remind. No talking while I'm talking. No TikToks open. And I'm like, did we just get hammered? And now we just have to like look at each other in silence. <laughs> the kids are passed out on Chris. We're just like looking at each other, like, oh, all right. Wow, I can't believe you went on the boat at nine in, at night. Jazz apparently got sick from the oysters. Oh. I, I will say I had fucking some mean diarrhea. Yeah. So, you know when you try to hit the gym the next day, and you're like, and you're like, I'm gonna hit the gym. I left twice to take a shit. Wow. It was bad. Damn. And then I had to go do Pardon My Take in Chicago. Woo! They'd have you do the gauntlet, that thing where it's like an athletic challenge. Let's just say my time was not good. <laughs> and it sucks when you're like, well, I do have diarrhea and I'm hungover. And they're like, no excuses. You're like, no excuses. Yeah. Well, that's a bad combo. Seafood, booze, seasick. That's a rough uh, thing on the stomach there. Yeah. That is hard. But you made it. It's you a showed lot. up. It's a lot. We were bombed. We were we were both singing that <laughs> song from all that jazz. I uh, think I'm gonna die. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with these people? And and shout out to the kids for hanging in there. Most kids go to bed at like six p.m. Well, these they kids were, are on a river. They were out cold. Okay. Yeah. Just out on a boat. Yeah. That's wild. Good life. They live a good life. Those those um tour guides. They always try to be funny. They always try to riff because they have no competition. Because it's crazy. I think Tim Dillon was a tour right. guy. Right. He was probably funny. He's up on the double decker, like, ah, and Mossad owns this house. <laughs> <laughs> he probably got discovered. Oh, yeah. There we are. Look at wow. us. Wow. Um, That's yeah, great. Yeah, we had a few of those. Uh, no, Rachel? She was in. No, we had, Chris just happened to go to Chicago with his family. Oh, oh, okay. So I was there afterwards to do uh, part of my take. Got it. Because it's not far from Minnesota. No, we were, we were in Minnesota together. Got it. Yeah, we were hanging in Minnesota. We were throwing back some. Manhattan's. Woo! It's one of those weird, like we can't get you alcohol. Yeah, one what of those is that? weird casinos. I don't know. Dry, I've had that. weird. He was like the Watcha Chiti people. I'm like, of course, yes. <laughs> the uh, Watcha some 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 spirit reason. I don't know. I don't know. Every Native American I met is uh, shit housed. Yeah. So what the hell? Come on. Yeah, but they're allowed to, but they don't let the others. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe no true. entertain. Maybe it's like bad for the entertainment. I don't know. That makes sense. There was one comic who came in and ruined that shit. That's Anytime true. you go to a comedy club, they're like, "Vic Henley was here in '97. <laughs> he had six bottles of Patron." Yeah. Like, oh, that's cool. True. So now we have to pay for it, you know? And then then you do the gig, and they're like, "We'll get you a vodka soda," and they give it to you in a sippy cup with a lid and a squirrely <laughs> straw. You're like, "What? What is this?" They give Vita an even smaller one. <laughs> mm. One time I did a gig at the Miami Improv. Are you doing that soon? I did it a couple weeks. Ago. Okay. And I love that room. 
It's a great St- room. Staff is awesome. Great staff. Shout yeah. out Justin, Melissa. Awesome. The best. They bought me uh, New Balances once just for, oh, to be nice. nice. Oh, that's that's uh, what's his name, Coleman. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They were a little too flashy. I've never worn them. I want to see them. And they're purple and neon. They're, purple. They're super cool, but I just it's I feel guilty. I've never worn them, but they did such a nice gesture. I yo, feel these, yo, these are the New Balance grimaces right here. <laughs> yeah. these out. We got the Barneys. <laughs> so I uh, I they pick you up in a limo. It's like old. It's like the eighties. They pick you up in a limo, and it's some cool Hispanic guy with aviators on. He's like, Yo, SA, what what you getting into tonight? I'm like, Ah, you know, you're hungover from the flight. I'm like, Ah, you know, what what whatever, whatever the town brings me. And he goes, You need coke? You need whores? I got gotcha. you. And I'm like, Oh, and I was like, Who else did you you, you get some whores for? And he goes, uh, John Panette. Wow. Apparently, Panette would would ask for a bottle of tequila when he landed, some blow, and then hookers at night. Yeah, Jesus Christ, that guy had, he had an appetite for a lot, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Blow, blowing to be eating that much is weird. Crazy. That crazy. ain't that ain't good. Farley, too. Farley was a big blow guy. That's right. Yeah, but when you're fat and you do blow, yeah. your heart is like, what are you doing to me, dude? I know. Why are know. you doing this? Yeah. But it's all those fat dudes. Dude, I was watching a Babe Ruth doc, and uh, it's pretty bad. It's on Max. Yeah. I mean, he's amazing. It is funny that there's just no black people playing. They're like, this is the greatest athlete I've ever <laughs> seen. I'm like, not one black Dominican. He didn't yeah. have to go against any of the, you know, the ne- there's some Negro Leagues guys putting up some crazy numbers. Sure. But, but you know, he was amazing. There's no de- na- denying Babe Ruth was amazing. And you look at what he ate. And crazy. It was like four hot dogs for lunch, two ribeyes for dinner, a ton of booze, a giant Coca-Cola. Even when he's not drinking alcohol, he's just drinking like sugar water. And cigars. Cigars. Scotch. Sausage. Yeah. Wow. Eight egg breakfast. And uh, there's one line. It's just like a hero worship documentary. It's like a PR fluff piece where, yeah. you know, they're like, uh, Babe Ruth adopted a kid and uh, with a woman and uh, and then he walked out on her. Anyway, Babe Ruth, <laughs> the things he did for those cancer-ridden children <laughs> were the Lord's work. Wow. Yeah. Well, what did he die at, like, 54? 50. Oh, okay, I there think you go. he had... Some sort of cancer. They didn't even tell me he had cancer. That was the weird part. Whoa, really? They were like, uh, yeah, you're just not. Well, it was back in the day. They're like, oh, 53. I was wrong. So they didn't want to upset him. Yeah. It was like, yeah. by the way, I would be pretty upset if you didn't tell me I was dying. Yeah, right? I mean, well, they wanted to keep playing, I guess. But he was a fucking booze bag party animal. And then he just like, he had a kind of a sad end of his life. Sure. But, you know, when you when you are flying that high that young... Yeah, give me a give me a wide shot, no pun intended, of Babe Ruth. Because even with the steaks and the booze and the cigars and the hot dogs and the Coca Cola, he still is thinner than my uncle, who who is like a is tax he, attorney. He was, and they show clips of him. And they're like, he was so fast. All the yeah. clips, all the clips are sped up though, uh, just like spinning around. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, he we might have. Apparently, he was fast. Yeah, he looked fat. His little legs could really go, but he he's not even that. Huge. He's, he's got the body type of Winnie, kind of the the oh, hefty, yeah. the little legs, but the the fat middle, like yeah. he's, uh, he's, he's one long chode. But <laughs> yeah, he's not even. I guess he's pretty pretty big there. But man, is he an ugly uh, ugly son of a bee? No one looks like him. No, it's no. not a normal face. My ex, but <laughs> that's why I had to get out. Oh, there he is with the uh, the Asians. That's fun. Oh man, he was. Uh... He was iconic, though. Oh yeah. I mean, he's everyone loved him on the team. He was like the party animal, playing cards, like getting loaded all night. Love it. Took you under his wing, like that must have been pretty cool. And it was back when sports figures were like they were like gods, you know? They're like, oh, the babe, there he is. He's seven foot tall. If he's a foot, he can crack a bat 20, 20 million miles. You know that whole thing it was almost like a Superman figure. Exactly, and like the type of legend who would refer to himself in third person and wasn't <laughs> annoying. Yeah, like go to this restaurant and tell him the babe sent you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but he. Uh, it's pretty cool the way he like he did lift up his teammates. I mean, it was it was he's iconic, but the doc was so bad. It's just people being like he was the greatest man who ever lived. Right, right. We loved Babe Ruth. Come on, I watched the Yogi Berra doc. I bet that was good. It's good, but not as uh, they're like he was a little dumb, a little slow. Immigrant family, barely spoke English. Big wop, ugly guinea, about four foot one. They they really gave him the business. But he was awesome though. So cool. It ain't over till it's over. Is the most iconic. Sports quote. He's got a mil- It's deja vu all over again. Yeah. I mean, his lines are like Groucho Marx esque. But the beauty is, 
he didn't know he was saying funny. He wasn't trying to be funny. He was just kind of slow. Yeah. And he was just saying it was almost like a kid talking, where you're like, oh, that's kind of brilliant, but you don't even know it. Yeah, there's a story like he, you know, he was on the team with DiMaggio, and there was one time he grounded out to shortstop or whatever, and he didn't hustle. Uh. And he came back to the dugout. He goes, he goes, uh, oh, you're just not going to run? And he never didn't hustle. Like, Whoa. just all that took was, like, one comment. Like, Oh, uh, good. Like, you think you're better than us? Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck you. You well, hustle. Hell yeah. Yeah, I love I've, I've been on a YouTube kick with, speaking of iconic, I watched a Michael Jackson dance scene from the MTV Movie Awards in wow. 1995. It's unbelievable. He was unreal. It's like Broadway level, Hamilton, uh, Cats, Les Mis. It's the choreography. <laughs> cats. Well, all right. He's fucking crushing cats. What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just so good. Don't fuck with cats. But uh, he's like... <laughs> It's like 15 minutes long, and he never stops dancing. At one point, he gives like a motivational thing in the middle, and he's out of breath, and then he goes right back to dancing. Four costume changes. At the end, he brings all the kids on stage, and he hugs them all. That was weird, but <laughs> great. It was like, you don't see that anymore. There's no message. There's no like, hey, we got to end uh, apartheid or whatever. He's just like killing it, it and it's, it's raw talent. It's amazing when you think, like, which a lot of people think of, Michael Jackson is unhealthy, a drug addict. Yeah. Right? And then you see he's in that kind of like athlete shape. Athlete. Like think about I'll walk up like four flights of stairs. I'm like <laughs> Oh yeah. Same. <laughs> you know? And he does the moon I got chills. He did the moonwalk and everybody goes, Ah it's, yeah. it's like Elvis. Oh and, dude, I was watching I it's so weird you said that. I went on a like, Michael Jackson music video kick recently. I'm watching like Smooth Criminal oh, yeah. and Thriller. Yes. They're fucking movies. They're movies. They're legit movies. I think John Landis did thriller. Did he? I think one of those guys did Thriller. Like Someone big, the real did, director. Yeah. yeah, it it's it's he's such an artist. It's incredible. But then yeah, you think, you're right. oh wow, he did. Uh, you got to think this kid's been performing since he was like five, and he he just became over years. 10, you know what it is? Hours. It's like learning a language when you're a baby. You just speak to span, you know, Spanish to a baby, and the baby grows up speaking Spanish. Yes. Oh, he doesn't know how not to speak Spanish. Right. So, right. you know, this is basically child slavery. Yeah. But but we got the best. We got we, the pyramid. We got the, we got the best. Yes, exactly. Tiger Woods playing golf at like two years old doing putts. It's not a good childhood. Sure. But it's great for the, the viewer. Yeah. We child abuse when it, it works. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, if you channel <laughs> child abuse into a skill, it's pretty amazing. Pretty cool. Because it's just so many hours of a... Scorsese, what did he do? Wait, what about Dan Aykroyd? What's oh, he going did on? Bad. Hoyt Schirmerhorn, uh, Subway Stop, by the way. Bad's filmed. No shit. Yeah, yeah. What did Aykroyd do? Aykroyd did Bad as well? No. He appeared in Lib Liberian Girl video. Oh, never heard of that one. But uh, it's crazy, too, when you start thinking, I'm watching the Michael Jackson thing, and I'm just thinking about the 90s, and I'm like, okay, so he's the king of pop. And then they cut to Lisa Marie Presley in the audience. I'm like, oh, wow, he's fucking Elvis's daughter. He used to be black. Now he's white. Wow. And he's a pet. There's so, much, so many layers to Michael Jackson. Yeah. Damn. So it's crazy. I never even put all that together. I Elvis wanted to be black. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Maybe on some yes. level he's glad an ex-black guy's fucking his daughter. It's like an onion. Elvis wanted to be black, like, now. Wait. You don't want to be black in the 50s. That's true, yeah. You want to be black with your rights. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But. Yeah. Damn, I mean, uh, yeah, he was fucking iconic. Iconic. Michael Ugly. Jackson, incredible. Remember where There's... you were when he died? No, but I remember Kurt Metzger's joke about it. Oh, uh, what's that? What's that again? Uh, he was at his grandmother's funeral, and uh, someone walked in like, something horrible has happened. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Farrah Fawcett died the same day. No one cared. I remember I was on a sh Okay, I remember I remember where I was when, the moment he died, but I remember where it was that night. I did my old show at the Sage Theater. Mm -hmm. oh, Alexandra yeah. Kump came on stage. 50. M Michael Jackson and Farrah Fawcett died, and Ted Alexandra's opener crushed. He just goes, uh, wow, what a day. Shaq to the calves. Crazy. <laughs> crushed perfect perfect because like what you know fair false imagine dying the same day as michael jackson insane insane only 50 he had another another 10 years in him <laughs> That's, realistically maybe well, i'm saying of like probably performing oh i and, thought you meant living oh no 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 but think of all the kids that didn't get diddled because he died early 
That is oh yeah. nine. I remember all the. Do you big think events. he was a diddler? Or do you think he was just like a stunted childhood one? In either way, it's gross. But one is way worse, obviously. Of course, yeah. I I think I think he was definitely off with the kids shit. I think yeah. his childhood fucked him up, and I think he had some repressed weirdo trauma that he would take out on these kids, like. I want. I never had a childhood, so I love these innocent kids because they make me feel like a kid again, even yeah. something I never had. But I do think if you're laying in bed with a kid after a couple of McNuggets, uh, you're gonna get a little handsy. Yeah, it just kind of happens. You start cuddling, you know. You have a few uh, strawberry shakes and uh, a few rides on that Ferris wheel and talk to the monkey. You know what's probably hard about being a pedo is eating what the kids eat. And then still trying to perform. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're trying to get hard after 20 McNuggets. That's not easy. Yeah, the dinosaur McNuggets. Come those, on, those are tough, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have a McFlurry. You're just like it's not working. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you get diabetes eventually <laughs> from all the candy. That's a good point. I never thought about man. that. I had this thought the other day. My my lady loves true crime, as every woman does, and there's all these horrific B actors who do the react reenactments. Yeah, you know they're like. And I'm like, these guys, these these murderers are keeping these shitty actors in work. They're keeping them working. Yes. How much do you think they're really making? I mean, a Dateline actor, like a the Adolf Hitler in the new uh, Netflix one, where he the whole time he's like, <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I don't think we're, this is exactly Lawrence Olivier. Here. Yeah, that's true. This is just some dude who just is like, can be. I'm like, he's so. It sucks when you can notice he's that bad an actor that they're overacting. As, like, the background. Yeah. It's like when an extra tries to do it, and you're like, no, just fucking walk by. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. There's, you know, a scene where, like, the guy comes in, and you can tell he's mouthing, because there's no dialogue, so he's like, your wife died, and the guy goes, (laughs) that's it. That's all it is. That bad? Yeah. Yeah. And they show him with a scotch, and he's just like, oh, it's it's all horrible. (sighs) But I guess they're acting, you know, acting as you want to you act. That's I got something. I got a movie rec for you. Okay. I might have texted to you already. Uh, Memories of Murder. Uh, the guy who did Parasite. Uh, Bung Jong hoo Oh, he's good. Dude, it's so good. Memories it, of Murder? Is it old? It's his second movie. Okay, I've seen uh, the train one. That's a good one. Spin? No. Something, yeah. Space Needle? Not <laughs> Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. Space Needle. Close. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one, man. It's like, oh. I'm all over it's it. A, it's a noir. Oh, hell yeah. It's dark. Koreans. Most talented Asians. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I can back it up. They, if, and we're talking like film. They're pretty yes. damn good. Yeah, 100%. I mean, did they do Old Boy as well? If they did yeah. Old Boy. Yeah, yeah. They okay, did. and this guy, he's amazing. And uh, Squid Game was Korean. <laughs> They're good. And BTS, I believe, is Korean. They make good stuff. Yes. China obviously is maybe the most efficient of uh-huh. the Asians, and I think Japanese is the slickest with the, the karate and the, uh, the what do you call it, the, the dojo. And I think China's got some big movies. Yeah, you're probably right. It's a, such a big country. Well, I, think I don't know s- enough about it. Oh, Okja was crazy. Something about the, uh, the split between North and South. I think there's some... This, some darkness. Some darkness there, and darkness leads to good art. I agree, man. Good noir. Yeah. All that good noir shit came post-World War II. I mean, Jews and black people, best comics, you know, because they have struggle mm. there and all that. It's a, ah, it's a lot of good non-Jew and black comics, too. Yeah, I guess you got uh, Carlin, Burr, CK. Yeah, well, come on. Quinn. I think every, every group's, you got to be funny. That's true. Funny is is value. That's it's true. Currency, especially when you're young. Yeah. Okay, Survival. No, what is this? Chinese? Ah, look at this. What? Kung Fu Hustle. Ah, you got Crouching Tiger. That was pretty good. <laughs> uh, Air Kung Strike. Fu Hustle is kind of fun. This is all, this is bargain bin compared to Korea. Joy Luck Club. Get out of here. Good book. Was it? Oh, yeah. My mom, that's her favorite book. Really? Yeah, she's a reader. Hmm. She loved Joy Luck Club. Memories of Murder Good. You got a wreck? Ooh. Oh, you did wreck. You wrecked the thing already. I wrecked Jonathan Hyde. Check him out. His book's great. He's he's working on another one. I think I saw a good movie. Damn, I rewatched Lion King. Still holds up. Lion King? So good. You, you, got, you got to save these for the kid. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are you doing here? It's Hamlet. It's it's The yeah. music's great. The hyenas, Scar. 
It's great. Yeah. Good movie. What? What? what I was on a plane. Uh, God, you must have been crying like a bitch. I was crying. The altitude yes. with a movie like that. Oh, yeah. That's a true thing, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's real. Yeah, that's why I never break up with a woman on a flight. <laughs> Imagine the 9-11 flight. They must have been just waterworks. <laughs> it's already a scary moment. <laughs> Best place to break up with a woman? A library. Oh. Got to be quiet. That's good. Right? <laughs> you mother... <laughs> Shh. Yeah. Look at the sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. An old bit I gave a friend of mine, black guy, because I couldn't do it. I was like, you ever want to quiet? If someone yells the N-word in like a restaurant, everybody's like, what the fuck? And everybody gets quiet. So if you want somebody, if you if a, if a library is too chatty, just have somebody yell the N-word and everybody's like. <laughs> he took the bit. I couldn't do it. <laughs> we got to look up that bit to find out who took that. It was Baron Vaughn. Ah. Gave it to him. Is it weird pitching an N-word bit to a black comic? Well, I was like... <laughs> it's a funny thing, right? I told him I have a funny idea, and he was like, oh, that's good. I was like, but I can't do it. Do you want it? He was like, sure. If you're not going to do it, I'll take it. And then he, you have to yell the N-word. That's the only way the bit works. You can't be like, N-word! Yeah. It ruins it. Yeah. So As long as you don't give it to an Indian comic and then take it back. <laughs> messed up. But Well, these Indian comics are uh, acting pretty black. <laughs> they are. These days. They are. What's going on what, there? What is that? Why do they get to do that? I don't know. You, you got your own culture, Indians. You got the uh, chai chai tea and yoga. and uh, That's not your voice. <laughs> yeah. We, we... I want video footage from when you were young. Yes. Also... You're stealing stealing cultures from yeah. us. That's our thing. <laughs> White guys acting. White black. guys steal culture. <laughs> yeah. And that's so now you're stealing black culture and you're stealing stealing culture from us. Right. So uh -huh. even if what we're doing is wrong, you are kind of jumping on that train. Yeah. It's like, oh, you want to colonize? That's that's us. We colonize and we do it fucking well. Yeah. And I think Britain colonized India. Britain, they have their hands in everything bad. Yeah. They've done so many bad things. That's true. We could pin the whole Middle East thing on Britain. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could really could. You think? I mean, they've yeah, there's some if you if you go to like the forties, they did some shit where you're like, Yeah, this a little bit on you. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you know do you know the difference between England, Britain, England, Great Britain, UK? And I think there's another one. Do you know the difference? I'm terrible at it. No, I mean, yeah, it in Ireland's in there somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scotland. That's, Scotland's in yeah. the UK. Yeah. Then I'm terrible at this. Yeah. I'm the wrong guy to ask. But, although I will be playing there, so okay. we should cut this so I don't sound like a fucking moron. No, I, I think you. I think most Americans are way off on this. I uh, Yeah, I, I'm doing Belfast, uh, Dublin, London, uh, Paris. Wow. Amsterdam, Man. Oslo. Norway, uh, oh, that is Norway, Oslo, and uh, Copenhagen and Stockholm, and I'm thinking about adding Berlin. Ooh, I'm thinking about it. Berlin's pretty cool. You you liked it a lot. I liked it. My my show was a little weird because the venue sucked, but uh, just as it, I went to a sex club, I went to the Wall. Um, it's just like a crazy looking city. Everything's wacky and fun and interesting. Yeah. It's it's a cool place, right. worth seeing. But are you doing like a day off, or are you just getting in and out? I don't have a lot of days off. Okay. I have like a, unfortunately, I have a lot of days off in London, which I've been to a bunch, and, ah. then, and then not. A, I have a day off in Paris. I have a day off. Oh, that's good. In some places, I think in Dublin, I have a day off. Well, oh, that's good too. Yeah. All right. I <laughs> wish I had another day in Amsterdam, but I don't. Ah, Amsterdam's I'm, pretty great. I'm gonna try to fit in the Anne Frank House and the. Uh, and the Van Gogh Museum. Oh yeah, that's worth it. it hey, you got to make an appointment. Yeah, because there's so many people want to see the Anne Frank. Yeah, it's. I'm crazy. gonna have to call my agent. Like you got to fucking you got to hook up Anne Frank tickets, dude. This yeah, is crazy. I don't know how the Nazis got in there. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. They're, they're adding a wing. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we got to make this bigger. Yeah, a hot ticket. That's true. That attic. I got to tell you, the attic is not that small. Yeah. Yeah. As a New York liver, I'm like, I could make this work. This yeah. is not bad. This is bigger than my first Bushwick apartment. <laughs> yeah, but it was a lot of people. That's true. That's and, true. And it was, uh, you had to be quiet. Yeah, true. There were, there were true. a lot of drawbacks. I wonder if uh, the mom was about to complain. The dad's like, <laughs> <laughs> don't complain. That's what got us. But Otto's uh, alive. No, he's not. Well, not anymore, but he survived it, I mean. He's the only one who survived he, it. He's the only one. And he said he, he he read the diary, and he was like, oh, my God, I didn't know any of this. Mm. Like, the daughter, he he was like, I didn't know her at all until I read the diary. Yeah, he uh, 
he tried to, they almost got to the States. He had a friend who was powerful and the letter was rejected. Whoa. I mean, that, that was a crazy part of this shit, man. It's like having the, uh, I think there was a, a boat of German Jews who tried to get to uh, Cuba. Oh, and wow. And they were just denied when they got there. They said what? they let them in. They denied me to go back to Germany. Oh. Imagine like you're, you're, you're leaving Germany like, fuck you, Nazi yeah. pieces of shit. <laughs> And then you have to go back. You're like, ah. Oh, my God. I'm a bitch about a Delta flight over I here. Know. And I know. And that boat ride was who knows how long. And you got to go right back. And guess what? We will bitch about a Delta flight again. Like, you feel bad yeah, for like two yeah. minutes. And then like 30 minutes later, they're like, we're going to circle for 20 minutes. And you're like, no one has suffered more than me. <laughs> this is bullshit. That's so true. I do get it. That, that is a pee when people are like, hey, what about what these people went through? I'm like, yeah. but I can still, if my hand gets cut off and your arm gets cut off, this still sucks to not have a hand. Yeah. You know, but they're like, hey, come on, you can't so We complain. communicate. We complain. Yeah. It's, you try to make it a peeve as a part of the show. Yes, yes. I got a million of them. You got more peeves? I got a million peeves because we haven't peeved. We have had so many guests that. Yeah. Uh, well, give me a, give me some peeves because I'm fucking low on peeves right now. All right. I finally started writing them down right when I think of them. That's I my problem. I always forget to. Same. Something will annoy me because I was leaving. I'm telling my girlfriend, I'm like, what do I complain about? She goes, I can't picture you not complaining. <laughs> like, All you do is complain. I was like, uh, well, give me something. She goes, I can't remember. I go, that's a peeve. Uh, You're not yeah. taking down my peeves. All right. Starting from the top. How about uh, this guy? Hey, uh, can I get a, can I get some brown mustard? Uh, we don't have brown mustard here. Story of my life. I love the story of my life guy. Not having brown mustard is the story of your life. This is your yeah. big tale. This is your big premise in your story is no brown mustard. Come on. It's a, it's a bad story. It's a horrible story. His funeral never had the right mustard. <laughs> Not a good. Uh... Uh, that's quite a eulogy. <laughs> that's uh, all there was to him. That's it. That's it. Was it. A boring guy. That's his story. Yeah. Right there. His brother was the mayonnaise guy. But <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, he started the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, a good peeve. I hate the story of my life. Because it, it's a, like, look, it's it's one thing like, ah, crap is one thing. But then you're, sure. you now become like this victim. Yes. They never have the brown mustard. Right, right. I All do right. love a brown mustard, though. Oh. I know. I love, you know what else I love? It's like a grainy mustard. Oh, yes. I love a grainy the mustard. Seeds. I'm such a, I'm a mustard guy. Me too. Horseradish mustard. Love it. They have one, they have it at Russ and Daughters. Oh, that's a good shit, man. Yeah, that's good. Whoa. Look up, look up that Russ and Daughters horseradish mustard. This is like my favorite mustard I've ever had, dude. Russ and Daughters is unreal. Russ and Daughters fucking rules. Yeah. I, I will wait on that dumb line on a weekend. Same. That's like the only touristy shit I actually do. They open another one, like like the Anne Frank house. Dude, how about fucking the strip house is going to carry Bodega oh! Cat? Oh, come on. That's a New York staple. This is big time. That's been that's high end over there. It's fucking big. Get yourself uh, a porterhouse and a and a neat bodega. It's coming soon and and dude, we're like big shipment, new sexy bottle coming. Ooh, 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 the ooh. only knock uh, their GM tr tried our uh whiskey they and they apparently loved it. Mm. Said the only knock is we don't love the the current label. feel of the label. I said, "Well, I got good news for you. We got a new fucking yeah, label coming." Yeah, we're upgrading, mofo. So we're cooking, baby. Bodega Cat's making some noise. You can't find the mustard. Nah, it's, uh, good. it's a good mustard. I'll, I'll find it somewhere. We'll, we'll get it. Yeah, I do love it. And I mean, I, I know it's hack, but great poupon is great. Oh, it's fucking classic. So good. H horseradish. Put in horseradish mustard. It might show up. Horseradish mustard. What a great combo. Oh, it's fucking. That's the stuff. Th Wait, no, it's not it. Oh, that one looks familiar. That second one. But yeah, it's a Stonewall Kitchen. It's a fancy one. <laughs> These are fancy mustards we're dealing with. Wow. Give me another peeve, man. You got Okay, you, I got I got plenty. You're crushing with I'm peeves. lousy with peeves. Uh how about this guy? This happened to me yesterday. I don't want to get too specific cuz he might hear this, but uh <laughs> Hey, can you chat for 5 minutes? And I go, I actually have about 5 or 6 minutes. I can chat. 17 minute call. Of course. You reel me in with the 5. Oh my god. And I I'm such an autistic literal I'm like, oh, hey, five minutes. I can do that. And then what else is going on? Oh, how's the baby coming? Oh, uh -oh what's New York like? Hot? It's hot out, huh? Oh, you should see it out here. It's fucking brutal. But I'm like, come on. We, what happened to five? I know. I, I, it is a pee for me when people don't get right to it. When it's yes. Like, when, when it's a friend, I don't care. But when it's like a work type call. It's a work call. That, that's It does bother me when someone's telling you like, yeah, I, I had a guy sending me like texts like this. And I'm like, dude, oh, what, are you, what are you doing to me? That's crazy. 
And and here's the clinker. If you go, hey, I'll give you five. He goes, yeah, no problem. And if I have five minutes, I go, I got to cut you off. They go, geez, all right. I'm you know, like, you, you know, set up the five. You know what you got to do? You got to treat it like hockey. <laughs> I need a shot you, clock? You, you got to say, like, there's a minute left in the period. Let's go. <laughs> and I need, like, a one of those big old old-fashioned sports horns. I that really should be wow doesn't that look good that bottle that's a good looking bottle strong sexy sleek grand curvy yeah voluptuous very nice Mm. erect (laughs) (laughs) what about um that is fucking annoying you feel like a woman because you're like you want to netflix and chill and then i'm like why are my pants off (laughs) you 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 rooked me i don't yeah it's it's a real peeve I, i got a peeve Please. And it's a fucking first world peeve, and I and I know it, and I'm saying it in advance. I stayed in shitty hotels for years. Yep. Occasionally I go on the road, I stay in a nice hotel. I was in a hotel that had a sauna. I was very excited. Yeah. Love a sauna, especially when you're traveling, you sweat out the fucking booze. Oh, yeah. You sweat out that airplane garbage that's in you. Yep. I go in there all excited. Four kids in there. Ah. Uh, what, what the hell are we doing? In a sauna. In a sauna. And they're like, uh, they're leaving the door open so the heat's all getting out. Oh. One, one of the dads was like, close the door. I'm like, you brought them in. Yeah, you're right. You're bringing the bad energy in. Kids have no place in a sauna. No place. There's, you're not, uh, what's the word, stressed yes, about anything? You, you got to be stressed to go in a sauna because you got you to gotta get the shit out. You gotta you gotta sweat it out. Yeah, what do you fucking you're like? Oh, I gotta uh, state capitals Monday. I gotta fucking <laughs> dine in here. Jesus Christ! Right? Yeah, I got a presentation at uh, Merrill Lynch. Yeah. No, get out of here. I'm, I'm going through a divorce. No, you're nine. <laughs> also, kids sweat all day. They're playing basketball and running uh, around. We don't sweat because we're adults. We walk around and go and live in air conditioning. Booked the hotel because of the sauna. Didn't get a good sauna. Kids, get out of here. Mm. And kids, all- kids will ruin a pool. They will ruin a pool. I remember Joe, pool. Joe List had a great tweet one saying, like, there should be, this is before he had a kid, by the way. That's true. But he said, uh, there should be an app telling you if there are kids by the hotel <laughs> Oh, pool. that's funny. I, like, I never Wow, that's, that. that's just a good bit. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> he's that great line. He's like, you can't you can't hit a kid, but you can throw one. That's so he's a great in a pool, bit. Like, ah! <laughs> kid's head's like an inch away from the coping. <laughs> Uh, another thing, but the sauna is for stressed out people, hungover people, and gays hooking up. That's it. That's all that's allowed in the sauna. I'd rather a gay guy blowing another guy. I'll take it. At least it's quiet. By the way, Mateo told me he's never been in a sauna. I don't believe it. He said he's never done it. Wow. My friend's got an Equinox membership, and he's like, it's full on gay, gay club. Is he in like Chelsea or something? I don't know. I think Certain neighborhoods, really- I think. Yeah, that sucks because I, I do want to go in there and just like relax. I know, I know. De Stefano got blocked in by someone. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah, I tried to hook up with him. Kind of flattering. Yeah, it is until you're stuck. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting raped. You're like, well, it's nice to be thought of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the uh, the signal is throwing uh, water on the rocks. You know, the. I do that all the time. Oh! You tease Fuck, them. are you kidding me? You're asking for That's it. a gay move? That's a gay move. That makes it hotter in there. That's why you do that. It's hotter, all right. Yeah. Well, Damn, I did that the other day. That's, dude, that's that, the gay move. That's like the tap on the floor with the uh, the bathroom stall. But it's not hot enough otherwise. God damn it, I'm gay. Yeah, and you didn't even know it. Damn it, I'm sending signals. We out at sale. I may as well been bent over, wiggling my butt in the air. <laughs> I just want it to be a little hotter in there. I, you know, I like the uh, I like the heat. Well, it's your fault for throwing water on the rocks and winking. I don't know why. You're <laughs> hey, big boy. <laughs> I dude, I do it. I, I I did the worst thing the other day. I, I said, "Hey, do you mind?" And I poured it on. Oh! It's a little too. Attention. It's a little. It's a little too uh, cool. And you mind if I put water on the rocks? And he's like, "Go ahead." Oh my god! So how was the sex? It hurt. All right. It well, was rough. You'll get used to it. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, Wingus. It's also you can't have gay code be the thing that everybody has to do in the sauna. That's like going, "How'd you know he was gay?" Uh, you know, he took a sip of water. <laughs> no, <laughs> everybody drinks water. It's, it's hot in there. Weird and specific. Yeah, yeah that's. That's insane. That's like what the thing is for. Exactly. What, what, how do you know he was a uh, gay at Subway? He ordered a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's bullshit. I think I got one more. Thought I had more, but I can't find him. Uh, how about this guy? I'm uh, I'm out with some friends. They're all idiot jerk off. One's a mechanic. One's a line cook. You know, just just dumb dumb old high school friends. And I got a couple bucks now. And so everywhere we go, they're like, 
I'm like, God damn, they they charge like six bucks for extra ketchup. And they're like, but you're rich. You're rich now. And I'm like, I still don't pay six bucks for ketchup. Everything is, oh, but who cares? You're rich. Oh, who cares? I'm like, well, I'm not going to go to an elo, uh, a helicopter and throw bags of money out. Yeah, it's you wasting know? money. It's, it's still wasting, wasting money. money. Yeah, It's still wasting. And I'm like, six bucks for ketchup? This is crazy. Hey, folks, we might be drunk is brought to you by Sheath. When you're looking for the most comfy undies that's going to cradle the sack and make your package look superb, Sheath Underwear is where it's at. We love it. I think I'm wearing it right now, if I had to guess. Woo! Look at that. A big old Melvin. Sheath is two pouches. One's for your dong, the other for your sack. You've never realized how amazing it is to segregate your balls and dong. Give it a shot. That's all I wear. I throw out everything else. I jizz on the wife. I s- scoop it up with the sheet dirties even. I keep the dirties around. Sheath underwear also lasts for years, so you're making a quality investment. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order. Plus, Sheath underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code DRUNK. Get Sheath underwear, support the show, and support your bowl. Yo, yo, we might be drunk as brought to you by Shopify. When your online store is raking in the big bucks, you'd better have a point of sale system you can trust. Shopify's got you covered. Their best converting checkout is 36% better than the other leading players in the game. Shopify works with millions of businesses across 175 countries and powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States. That's a hell of a track record. Shopify even makes your busy work a breeze with Shopify Magic. Shopify Magic helps you write product product descriptions, edit images, answer customer messages for a smooth shopping experience. You already know that your business is top-notch. Make sure your point-of-sale system is, too. Sign up for $1 per month trial, period, at shopify.com slash drunk, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash drunk to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash drunk. It's hard to resist the siren call of popcorn and soda. That's why there's Factor. Factor is no prep. No mess meals are dietitian approved and get sent right to the front door. With over 25 meal options each week, everything tastes amazing and takes just two weeks to prepare. Throw in a Factor meal in the microwave or on the skillet, you're good to go. I've used Factor, it's great. You, you throw it on, you know, I live a sad life. I eat it over the sink sometimes. I don't even heat it up. Think about killing myself. But do I do it? No, because Factor tastes delicious, even cold. Choose from uh, six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced meals. Whatever you're looking for, Factor's got you covered. Head to factormeals.com slash drunk50 and use code drunk50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code DRUNK50 at factormeals.com slash DRUNK50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Woo! It's insane. It's insane. And you know, like, thank God all the taxes are going to something good. Try driving on any of the fucking roads here. Oof. It's a little, you think you're in the fucking, you know. I know. It's the Sudan. I got a, yeah. I got a classic car. I'm, I'm like up on the sidewalk trying not to hit a pothole. My whole car will fall apart. It's crazy. Try driving from Philly to here and you're like, what, where's the money going? Yeah. It's the right? bumpiest, sketchiest ride. That's true. On the highway too. I'm yeah. going 80 and it's like, ba-boom. I know. Crazy. All right, last one, then I'll yeah. leave everybody alone. How about this guy? My opener was doing this a couple weeks back. He does he does the uh you wanna you wanna do this? You wanna do that? You wanna do this? Which is just stuff he wants to do, but he gives it he poses it as a question. Like I'm giving You, you a- wanna pour some water of the rocks on Equinox? <laughs> <laughs> but like we'll we'll have uh we'll have food in the green room and he's like I know there's food in the green room. You want to go out to eat? And I'm like, no, I'm gonna, I want to eat the food in the green room. He's like, you sure you don't want to go out? I'm like, I told you what I want to do, but you keep, do you want to go out? He's like, I don't care. And I'm like, all right, well, let's just eat this if you don't care. He's like, you want to go out though? I'm like, so you want to go out? He's like, no, no, I'm just asking. I'm like, well, then let's eat this then if you don't care. You sure you don't want to go out? Like, <laughs> just say you want to go out. I'll go out. It's not about the food. It's about you fucking gaslighting me. Yeah. You want to do this? You want to do that? You want to get you want to get a hooker? 
Nah, I got married. I probably shouldn't get a hooker. <laughs> so you don't want to? No, no, I don't want to. Stop asking me. Yeah. Or let's just do it, and 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 you got to admit to it. Yeah, the road ritual is. It, it you need to have you need to do everything you feel comfortable doing because the second you cave in, you, next thing you're like, why did I fucking do that? That's true. Because I felt it, dude. We went out hard, and then I had shit to do, and I was like, fuck. Yes, I have. I know that feeling. I'm hurting. Fucking and I have shit to do. Dumb Ari. We I got, knew it was Ari. Yeah, we got the. He, he's our Newman. He's like Newman Ari. He. Uh, we went out. I miss him. I never see him anymore. Oh, he's out. He's out and about. He's doing some scheme. But uh, we went out drinking, and we had about 19 martinis. We put suits on. We went out for some r- ridiculous reason. We're like, hey, we have suits on. We might as well get hammered. So we got martinis, and we just had one after another. We're talking. I have a photo of us. I'm standing on a mailbox on Avenue A, and he's like, we're just, you know. Who we took had, the photo? Sal Volcano was there, too. He That's took the hilarious. photo. And uh, we had a great night. I get home. I ride a city bike home at 5 a.m. I got one eye open. I'm wearing a oh. suit. I, I must look like a, like a walk of shame or something. Finally get home. You know, May is like, what the? what? Where the hell have you been? What's going on? I reek of booze. I got a suit on. She's like, You, what you didn't make hell? one check-in? I'm getting loaded? Nothing? No, nothing. I was too drunk. I never looked at my phone. And uh, next amazing. day, an alarm goes off at like nine. <laughs> you get home and she's like, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, good luck with that. <laughs> you know, you also do that thing when you're, when you're shit-faced. You go home, you're like, you know what? I'll have a uh, emergency packet and a glass of water. That'll cover it. Yeah. I'll be good tomorrow. Maybe I'll have a slice of bread and a, and a vitamin like C. Like putting a bandage on a gunshot wound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, this will cover it. I'll, I'll drink two glasses of water. How about that? <laughs> I do it. I always. Always. You, you're fooled. And uh, you, know, you go to bed, eh, eh, your head's this big, it's on fire. And I had so much to do. We had two pods. Remember that? We had, uh, who was in here? Adam Ray and somebody else. Yeah. And uh, The Churnins. Churnins, yeah. And I'm just like, ah. And then I had a bunch of sets. I had to go to do a set in Queens. We, drank, the, we drank a decent amount that day, though. I, that saved me. Even having a couple of drinks during the day, I fucking feel it at night these days. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. But then I call Ari at one point, or I text him. I was like, "Dude, what, what were we thinking? This is the worst day of my life. I, I shouldn't have done this." And he's like, "Oh, I'm, I'm at like I'm in the steam room at whatever." And I'm like, "Oh, you didn't have anything to do?" He's like, "No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm a comedian. What am I doing all day?" I'm like, "But you had shit to do." I had shit to do, but he didn't, and that's he got me. They always get you. It, it's like a game. Yeah, they know that they have the. Like, I'll be fine. I can lose this day, and you're like, "No, I can't lose. I, I had can't shit. lose it." Yeah, exactly. but also those those hangs are kind of like rare these it days. It was pretty great. We're getting older, and it's like I regret them like a motherfucker the next morning. But like a week later, I'm like, I'm glad I did that. That's true. That's true. Once you get through that day, you're like, that was pretty. We were walking on car hoods, you know. Like it was one of those like legendary drunk nights where you're almost to a blackout, but not there yet. When we're old men, we'll look back and be like, those were fucking fun nights. That's true. Because what you know. You need, every once in a while, you need to make some bad decisions. Oh, yeah. And Sal was getting hammered. And uh, it's fun getting drunk with Sal because he's, like, doing shots. I got him in a headlock. And then some 17-year-old girl walks by. She's like, oh, my God, I love you. And he's like, ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's, like, so wholesome on TV. And uh, everybody loves him. And then you see him out in the wild. and he's, But he is still kind of a wholesome drunk. Oh, sweet, That's sweet That's the man. thing is, he's, like, kind of still that guy. Yeah. He's, He's like, God bless you, sweehearart. And I got him and I'm him. You know? Yeah, it was a good time. I fucking love that, dude. Good to you feel like Don Draper though. You come home, your bow tie's undone, you're like, ah, shut up, you old broad, you know, and you throw a glass against the wall. <laughs> That's fun. You fuck damn. That's a good drunk, man. Yeah, we really did it up. It was fun. We got to do one of those soon. Let's do it. I, I guess we do do it almost every week, technically, <laughs> but but like an actual non-recorded one where we're just like, got to hit like, maybe we'll hit Strip House when it's like, when the Mega Cat's there. Good something, call. Something like that. Good call, yeah. Got to do something. Like DeRosa, he lives in Philly now. He's riding on tires. I'm like, man, they must be just tying one on every night. Gillis and all those guys. Oh, yeah, that job came at a cost. Oh, yeah. Joe DeRosa's going to die at 51. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give him so much shit. He is that friend at funerals who's like, true. Who's like excited he gets to do shots for a reason. I know. We got to do this for Jimmy. I'm like, fuck. All right, fine. Yeah. Piece of shit. You can't turn out a funeral shot. I mean, that's too it's disrespectful. God damn, DeRosa.
Don't die, Joe. We love you. No, no, we need you at those funerals. (laughs) (laughs) He was out of mustard, story of his life. (laughs) He's got the sandwiches. Yeah, that's true. Are we in there? Bodega Cat's got to be in in that place. We got to work on it. Joey Rose. I think I, oh, I got one. Oh, I got two more peeves or one more. Now, this is more of like a, you see this maybe once a year, once every two years, and it really fucks you up. Yeah. I'm not a squeamish guy. I eat ass. I'm not a square. I'm not a prude. Respectable, yeah. I saw this one the other day, and I hadn't seen this in a while, and it fucking it grossed me out. It, it made me my stomach turn. How about this guy? Ooh, yeah. Oh, the booger eater. I saw him on 2nd Avenue. He didn't think I caught him. I caught him dead to rights. Big old brown bug. Right in the kisser, right in the mouth. He he ate the whole thing, and he loved every minute of it. Who are these people? Yeah, it's not good. I mean, these people should be strung up and and hung in the town square for us to all mock and ridicule. It's one of the things, if you do it, you just can't do it in public. No. Oh, God no! It's this just not Manhattan. It's it's not it's not sanitary. Yeah, there's there's nine million people in this city. You think you're not gonna get oh, busted? This is gonna make me nauseous. Yeah, I, can't find, but we've, <laughs> I saw a guy do it on the subway once, like five years ago, and I still think about. It. I'm in the shower, like ah, oh, fucking god. <laughs> you ruined your fun. <laughs> I need a silkwood shower. The amount of fucking garbage in this city subway. <laughs> I remember I was on the train once late at night, and I you know see a guy in a wheelchair like barely hanging on he's like uh, 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 hanging on and he's and he falls over i'm like fuck and i walk over like fuck, i guess i gotta help this guy yeah, up so sure. i saw he, but he's clearly clearly i could tell something's wrong with him too but i'm helping him up and some guys i'm doing it goes don't do it and i'm like whatever i just did it i helped him up and then uh he leans over again he's like uh, 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 and he falls over i'm like i guess this is his thing Whoa. he just falls over and wants people to help him up so no money or anything no he's just like a fucking mess wow and then i smell i'm like he shit himself. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm helping a dude up who's pooped his pants. Yeah, you gotta pit that Purell. It's a t- it's a bad one. Oh. And then I helped him up the first time, and they did it again. The guy looked at me, and goes, "I told you." <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a New York moment. That's a right New York there. moment. I got because I usually don't get got. Sure. But sure. a guy in a wheelchair falls over. Like, what are you gonna? do? Of course you're gonna. Help I know him. you gotta do it. But what other city does a guy in a wheelchair fall over and a civilian goes, "Don't help. Don't him. fall for it. Don't fall for it." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sagalo has a. F- I saw a clip of his new special. He had a funny bit where he saw a guy slip on the subway, and his first thought was, "That's fucking fake. There's, there's got to be a camera everywhere. I'm not falling for it." And it's, it's like how, he's like, "How sad is life that we've come to this where everything's a video, a TikTok, a fake thing, a prank." And I'm like, I completely agree. Everything I see, I'm like, I'm, I'm suspicious. suspicious. Well, I, a true story. So years ago on the train, there's a guy with no legs pushing himself and mm. begging for money. And I and I heard a guy whisper to his friend, this one's not faking it. Oh, wow. And I was like, wow, that's fucking sad. Damn. He's been burned by a no-legged con before. Yeah. Not there, good. There used to be a guy in New York, I don't know if you've seen him, but he was uh, burned, like burn guy, you know, scars everywhere. And yeah. he had a poster board and it had all the newspaper clippings of the house fire he was in and how he was a little kid and he got rescued by the FDNY. And uh, that's got to be real. That's got to be real. It also sucks that that's like your whole persona now. <laughs> I know. He just became the burn guy. Yeah, yeah. He was Like you're carrying the fucking clippings? He was leaning in. I mean, talking poster board. Like He's got merch. <laughs> yeah. You guys want it's like shoulder to knees, full on. And I was yeah. I was reading it. He kept walking. I was like, hold on, hold on. I got <laughs> this page three. Yeah. <laughs> Times picky. I mean, koozies are only seven bucks. <laughs> the burn koozies, but they keep it cool. Yeah, you gotta get a fire wallet or, or something <laughs> or lighters. <laughs> Remember those? <laughs> yeah. Fucking fire wallet. Tom Dustin made more money on fire wallets in a in a year than I made all, in ten years. So the point it was just a gag wallet. You just open it and there's no money and it just lights on fire. Yeah. It's got a flint in it. It's pointless. Pointless, but they they moved, man. Uh, maybe I'll get one. <laughs> yeah, now, that, now that look at, it, I kind of like it. How does that work? Uh, get, give me a, a video on that, because I want to see this uh, in action. Because you you whip one of these out and you get people's attention. This is a good way to disturb hobos. Like, hey man, <laughs> can I get a dollar? And you're like, Whoa. you're like a wizard. 
They always make these videos too long. I had a friend who tried to get into a, we were trying to get into a bar underage and he'd have a fake ID and I did and I got in and then he, he busted out the fire wallet uh-huh. and the guy looked at me and goes, get in there. Oh, you see? It worked. It worked. Because I think the guy was like, look, you might be 18, but you're, you're good energy. We, yeah. could, we could use you in there. <laughs> yeah. I have a theory and no one's going to want to hear this, but I think women secretly want to fuck the shit out of magicians. I don't know about secretly. Some of them, I mean, Copperfield pulled some great ass. Okay. Didn't, didn't he get uh, Claudia Schiffer? He did. I mean, you tell me Blaine doesn't get ass? Blaine's a sexy magician, but these are nice celebrities. Breaker. Yeah, but you know what? A celebrity ping pong player gets ass. If I'm you... talking a regular uh, backyard birthday party magician. Yeah, I but, think it's fucking the stepmom. But if you're an entertainer, if you're like, if you have that kind of charisma that you can make a living as a magician, you're getting people's attention. You know yeah. how to turn it on. I, I get it. I get it too. It's just the eyeliner and the fishnet gloves and the weird outfits. That... Yeah, well, think about how rock stars dress. Ah, good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah, magicians. I'm telling you, because first of all, a good gag to do on this guy is to just is to open it and just dump fucking. They, they pull it out. You just dump some fucking <laughs> lighter fluid. Lighter on fluid on it. They explode. Uh, <laughs> how do they not hurt the bills though? You think it would light their bills on fire? Well, yeah. you don't put your money in there, do you? I think you do. No. I think it's just a gag. I think it's pointless, the gag wallet. I don't know. Look, well, look. Hold on. Okay, we got the light. And now, light. Hold on. Credit cards. Or maybe those are fake. All right, well, call in if you have a firewall. Oh, there's a little trigger. Okay, good All to right. know. Maybe I'll get one. But you got to think, approaching a woman is so hard. You coming up with stuff to say? You gotta you gotta break the ice immediately. You're a magician. You you go do some sleight of hand shit. Yeah. Boom. Ice broken. It's pretty cool, man. That's what I mean. They they they're natural entertainers. Like they've been doing that shit. Like the way we have to fill in like awkward silences with something uncomfortable, like a joke or something. They're filling it in with like. Yes. They're doing like weird, like you know. What's that behind your ear? Yeah. yeah. That, and that shit is universal. Like that it wor- is. That works on little kids. That works on adults. That right. works on an old lady. Yeah. I mean, it's it's impressive. Like, you go, how the hell fuck did you do that? Because it's work. It's like, you know, when you see a good magician, you're like, well, that trick was, was a lot of work. Right. Right. True. They put in time to learn it. Yeah. And the lady goes, how'd you do that? Come on. Now you get to keep doing stuff and show her another trick. I mean, you're in immediately. Yeah, you know what? Because women like mystery. They love mystery. How do you do that? Yeah. It's mystery. Exactly. And you throw some jokes in, too. Like, oh, your panties are disappearing tonight. Whatever. <laughs> you're, you're, it's over. Look at this fucking tool. I love these guys. Look at the leather jacket. The whole thing. These guys are such dweebs. But a lot of comedians started as magicians. Woody Allen, Steve Martin. Orson Welles is a magician. Was he? Yeah. Oh, amazing Jonathan. He loves he loved magic. There's a story that this uh, director wanted him in his first film. This guy did the books, uh, Lunches with Orson. Mm-hmm. And he, Peter Bogdanovich, gives Henry Jaglum his info. He's like, he'll never do your first movie, but here's his info. He shows up at the hotel to greet him, just knocks on the door. That's no email back then. Yeah, yeah. Knocks on the door. Orson Welles opens the door in like purple silk pajamas. Said he looked like a giant grape. And he goes, who are you? And he just said, oh, I, I need you to be in my movie. It's my first film. And he goes, I'll never do a director's first film. Never. And he goes, well, you did your first film and you directed it. And he goes, never. Get out of here. And he goes, "He goes, I know you love magic. You, you play a magician. And just pause. And he goes, could I wear a cape? <laughs> and he did it. But he loved magic. He, I mean, efforts for fake. He did magic too. Right. Right. Wow. Man, it's like he... Nathan for you before Nathan for you. Yeah. Kinda. It's a weird one. Fascinating guy that was. Oh, I love him. Man. What? Uh, you got jokes you're working on? Yeah, I do actually. Let's see what I got. I got one that's hitting, but I can't figure out where to go. But uh, by the way, I got that money joke working. We were we were throwing around for a while that's that's something yeah that, oh, let me try one on you please movie theaters like all the trailers are st- for stuff that's on netflix T- on tv you get commercials for youtube mm. they're literally advertising their demise oh that's my thing my, it's like when a woman posts pictures with her guy friend she know you know she's gonna hook up with after you oh and you're like oh good. cool that's what's coming next i guess that's you know? good There's something there right Definitely. it's more of a twist but it's like 
That's a great premise too. You're you're doing ads for YouTube. You're doing the you're showing the thing that's gonna. It's it's like Netflix or a blockbuster doing ads for Netflix. Yeah, you know. And where the fuck's Blockbuster now? It's you're you're advertising the thing that's killing you. Yes, yes. It's like us doing an ad for Bodega Cat Whiskey. <laughs> BodegaCatWhiskey.com, folks. No, what's a uh... yeah? What's a famous thing where where they took the guy took him under his wing and then he he killed the guy or something? Ooh, there's got to be some story like that, like some Shakespearean thing. But it's got to be like an ad, right? Yeah. Um, Oh, this might be too too topical, but Kamala was like, Joe Biden's great. He's doing awesome. We love him. And then where's he now? And then she's she's sliding in. I like that. That's possibly the turn. Yeah. And then she's like, she's like eh. you better drop out or yeah. we'll fucking drop you out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of like the uh, the butler, you know, who's who's working for this giant oil tycoon and he's like hmm he won't last long you know and he's like i'm gonna leave you everything in my will and the guy the butler's like aha yeah i'm gonna kill you eventually and then i'll have the mansion what uh what but i you? love the the girlfriend posting a photo like of the too. guy it's... with that she's like he's just a friend he's just a friend and then we've all boom, been there he fucks her yeah what do you got uh, that's funny uh have i done the uh the gun porn joke on you I don't think so. So I saw this thing uh, about kids aren't having sex anymore, like teenagers are having way less sex, mm -hmm. and everybody says it because of porn. They're like, porn, they watch, all these boys watch porn, so then they don't approach women, because they're like, I'm good, I'm satisfied. I don't need to go get shot down by some, some lady. I already got off. But then they also say that shooting movies makes kids school shoot. So I'm like, how come porn is making you not fuck but shooting movies are making you shoot. That's a great angle. And I thought, I think the reason is because porn, you shoot a load. After an action movie, you go see John Wick, they should hand you one pistol, and you go, all right, I'm good. I think the problem is, though, with shooting, like, this may be worth this in somehow, like, you shoot a load, and then you, you feel you regret it. Oh. Because, like, you watch porn, I'm just like, ugh. Don't you feel that feel like shame. self loathing? Yeah, you feel shame. You don't feel shame after you shoot a gun. You're just like that was fucking cool. Well, if you shoot a guy, you might feel shame. But you can't. You can't feel like you shoot a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you play a video game where you shoot a guy, and he's like, "What the? What have you done? You have oh, killed me!" Oh yeah. No. Something like that. though, where it's like uh, the shame needs to come in. There needs to be a way you get. It's close. It's like it's not hitting as of now. It's not enough. So I think you're onto something. Well, shooting. When you finish, I think something funny. I, I, go, I think the difference is when you when you shoot a load, you see the world kind of more clearly. Yes. You don't do that if you shoot a gun. Oh yeah, you right. Get, you don't fire. You're not at the range. You fire. You fire two rounds, and you're like, "What have I done?" <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's not there yet, but it's like you fire two rounds, and you're like, "Man, I'm fucking. I'm sick." Yeah. I'm a sick fuck. <laughs> Maybe the shooting range is almost like a porn theater. You know, like you get it out there and then you don't do it at school. There might be a connection to like porn and school shooters. Either way, it's because you don't have a girlfriend or something, you know? Oh, yeah. True, true. Yeah. Huh. I had an old premise. It's different, but about how like it's weird that like they say like these shoot 'em up video games make kids numb to violence, right? Because it's like, oh no, they, they don't, they're like, they have nothing to do with the school shootings. It was like, all right, I'm not going to blame video games for actual murder, but there's no way that shit's not numbing you to violence. Like yeah. I, I, they're playing for like eight hours. I watched 30 seconds of porn. I'm like, ugh, that was bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> funny. It's like an angle. I was trying to, it's a different bit, but. Uh, that's true, but, but I thought the shoot a load. It, it's such a it's such a perfect um, perfect connection A to B. Yeah, they both shoot a load. Both shoot a load. I think the main difference is uh, no one gets hurt if you shoot a load with porn. You shoot a load with a gun, somebody might get killed. It's also just a different experience. Like you watch a porno, you're doing it alone. You're not watching a porno with a group. Like yeah, you oh, see John yeah. Wick in the theater. You're like this is fucking awesome. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're close. It's just one little 
Say it one more time, shoot a load. The kids are watching porn, it's making them not fuck. But kids, they say kids are watching shoot 'em up movies and it makes them shoot. So I'm like, why is one making them not do the thing and one is making them do the thing? You know, and I think, I thought it was because porn you got I think, off. I think it's because it's easier to get a gun. Than get a lady. Yeah. Oh, that might be that it. That might be it. That might be it. Yeah. Gun. You go just go into a store. Yeah. Lady, you, no one ever goes, this guy's a little weird. I'm not giving him a gun. Yeah. Weirdos get guns all the time. Yeah. That's not bad. It's easier to get a gun yeah. than a lady. That might be the angle. Uh, I think you cracked it. Maybe. Here, I'll try me, it. I'll, I'm going to go noodle with it later. Noodle. I'm going to noodle. I think you cracked it there. Okay. What do you What do you got? Um, easier to get a gun than a lady. That's big. I mean, you go to a guy's house, he's like, you want to see my gun collection? No guy's like, you want to see all these girls I fucked? <laughs> you know? Yeah, maybe it's, he shows you a gun collection, you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. You go to his house and he goes, you want to see all these girls I have in the basement? You're like, I think I'm going to call the FBI real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's on a watch list. That's good. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Yeah, you can collect guns and it's like seen as like kind of cool. Right. Why is that girl have a gag in her mouth? Silencer. <laughs> um, the, it's not bad. Something there. Yeah, there's something there for sure. All right. I like that observation. Maybe something with a porno magazine and the, the gun magazine. You know, like the, the bullets. Maybe that's too too uh, specific. Porn mag. I think if you're too into either, it's a red flag. Yes, yes. Too into porn, too into guns. Right. Like you have you have a few guns you, sure. you go to the range whatever but like there's the people that have like a shitload and you're like all right that, that's a little well the thing is you don't have to satisfy a gun you know you got to satisfy you do have to maintain a gun though. you do have to maintain a gun you got to clean it got to buy bullets yeah mm. bullets is like the dinner <laughs> 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 there's something here silencer machine gun automatic Uzi hmm. Okay, pistol, handgun, hand yeah. job. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is how joke writing goes, folks. No, I think I think the women gun thing is... It, I think that's it. It's easier, it's easier to get a gun. I wonder if anyone has that. I don't know. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll I hope noodle. I hope I didn't just say someone's fucking thing. I'm sure everyone's done everything. Everyone's man. done everything. It's crazy. I was watching this JFK doc, mm -hmm. and... Uh, this guy, this historian comes on, he goes, uh, I think what really did him in was his obsession with women. Mm. I was like, really? Uh, uh, I think it was getting shot in the face. I don't think it was. That's great. I don't think like the doctor was like, man, this guy's head fell off. <laughs> what happened? Pun Punani overload. I don't know. Yeah. I need something better than that. But uh, Maybe someone with getting head. Yeah, he got head. You know. He, he, got, he got brain. He, well, this guy used to have a lot of head. Yeah. He used yeah. to have a lot of, yeah. He to... got road head. Yeah, road head. That's fucking good. <laughs> Roadhead's the word. Yeah, what killed him? Roadhead. Roadhead. Ah! Roadhead. He, he blew everywhere. Yeah. Blew all over the back seat. Yeah, his, yeah, he, uh, he had the. He got a head in front of his wife. Yeah. <laughs> Roadhead. <laughs> he didn't in even care if his wife was around. He, he, he blew yeah. right in front of her. Yeah, right, right in front of his wife. <laughs> This is so dark. Also, it's the only uh, only roadhead that's like a, a a sightseeing tour. Like you go to Dallas, like, hey, you want to see where the guy got blown up? His face got shot off. I'm sure they do that with this, Butler uh, too. Butler, PA. Yeah, there's a lot there. He d he did get so much fucking ass though, and it was always like there's something funny. He's always fucking someone that was like a danger to the country. Oh, really? Yeah, and RFK always had to clean it up. Ah. Uh, Wow, like like what, like a liaison or something? Spies, stuff Whoa. like that. Oh, yeah. wow! A fucking, he's a lunatic. And if you can nail the accent, that's an extra bonus on the joke. I uh, 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 I, uh, uh I got a lot of head back uh, in my day. Uh, <laughs> do that was, not. That, was, that wasn't bad. <laughs> Ask not what the girl can do for you, but <laughs> where you can shoot it. All right. <laughs> Oh yeah, shoot it. There's a, there's shoot a lot it. of. Uh, We're both doing gun pussy yeah. jokes here. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, that made me think of it. What else you got? That's fun. That's gonna be big. That's huge. Uh, all right, this one's a big misdirect, so I hate to give it away, but I think this it's the misdirect is hitting. I just need more of a more angle here, more of a place to go to sure. take it. Sure. So I, you know, I'm from Louisiana. And New York is very, you know, progressive city. So whenever my New Orleans friends come up to visit me, I always have to prep 
my New York friends. Like, watch out. Some of these guys are animals, you know. So I'm like, my buddy's coming up. Just letting you guys, giving you a heads up. He's very religious. Old school, like devout. I'm talking doesn't like gay people, hates abortion, makes women dress a certain way. And all my friends are like, what? How can you hang out with this piece of shit? He sounds like a real asshole. What is he, Southern Baptist, hardcore Christian? I'm like, nah, he's Muslim. <laughs> and that kills. <laughs> and it gets one of those like, oh, laughs, you know. And then all my friends are like, ah, he sounds nice. Bring him <laughs> up. Let's, uh, we'll get some shawarma or whatever the fuck. Oh, so I got, I got the misdirect because uh, it just shows like how white people, we treat different cultures differently even though they're the same, basically the same problematic thing. Oh, you were expecting a white guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is funny that they have to like pretend that, they li- that they're cool now. Exactly. There's a fine line between tolerance and, and uh, intolerance, and it's like... It's color. It's color. Well, I mean, I, I thought of it because of all the, like, the Hamas stuff. They're like, gays for Palestine or whatever, and you're like, what are you kidding? They're going right. to kill you over there. But... It's because they're over there, they're brown, or whatever it is. I don't know why. Culture, yeah. But if you were like, fuck, we're going to throw this gay off a roof, they'd, they'd kill you. <laughs> you know? But like, if, or if I did it. But if, uh, if they do it for somebody that's okay, I don't know. It's so, it struck me as like, I could make a bit out of this. Yeah. The ne- I think the next thing is like, so what do you just say about the, uh, there's a, there's a uh, fine line. I think it's color. Yeah. Yeah, brown. Well, it's the same way like someone will go after us for saying a joke, but if a rapper made mm, the same type of comment, interesting. that type of blogger would never dare. Culture goes a long way. Culture goes a long way. Because that's kind of part of rap culture. Bitches, hoes, you know. Yeah. All that. So you kind of let it slide. So uh, who had that great line, uh, PETA never goes to the player's ball? And throws paint on them. You know, it's a bunch of rappers in fur coats walking down, and Peter's never like, let's throw paint on them. They're like, oh, we're going to let that one slide. <laughs> you know, I don't want to get shot or whatever. That's a good fucking point. Great point. They're not breaking up dog fights. Yeah, yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know? they'll, they'll write a post about Michael Vick after he's in jail, but they're not going down there. That's a fair point. Mm-hmm. So I guess the lesson is you got to, anybody who criticizes you, shoot them, and you can get away with anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, if you murder people, you can you can really believe whatever you want to believe. Yeah, you'll get popped eventually, but you'll have a you'll be all right on. I don't know where the, the I think the turn is really like calling out that type of liberal person, though, right? Who thinks they're really open minded? Yeah, they're like, Ex- That's not, exactly. You, you think you're really open minded, but you're really just a pussy. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it, I'm not trying to shit on Muslims, because I know not all Muslims are like that. Same has not all Christians are like that. Sure. But uh, they they totally flipped the script when I was like, he's Muslim. They're like, well, you know, different cultures, different people, you know, right, who am right. I to judge? Like, well, you should judge them, treat them equally. I thought that was what we were doing here. I think there's something there for sure. Yeah. I just hate to leave it at that. That gets a laugh, but then it feels like, and you know it's one of those ramp bits. it's gonna be one of those ramp bits where you're like you yeah know, like oh wow it's a, it seems like you only believe that because but it's something funny because like we all kind of believe that in some way that's the funny sure thing. like we all think it, I, I think you can kind of if you maybe flip it on yourself you know like there is something funny about that yeah my friend is muslim and he's obviously not homophobic or anything but he was like it might be funnier if you flip it to muslim to christian you know, like, oh, I was watching this documentary of, of the Middle East to where these people were. And I think that probably would hit harder because you're laughing at a Christian instead of a Muslim. But I like the I like the other way because it's pushing well, the line. It feels off. more current, maybe. More current, yeah. You know, the Christian jokes have been made. Exactly. It's, it's a little easier. This has got a little more, little more bite to it, I think. It's tough. It's a tough call. It is. But it's easy... You know, because we go, hey, priests diddle kids. That's an obvious joke that's been made nine million times, nine but they don't all diddle kids. It's just, you know, it's just a stereotype. That's how jokes work. Yeah. So I'm just going off that. Yeah, I don't know the t- twist yet. Yeah, I don't know, because it's hard when you get a laugh, and then you're like, ah, oh, that joke's what, what done. Now? Oh, dude, that's my whole fucking act right now. I'm Same. like, close. All these Boston comics, they can, like, stretch out shit. You know, like Gary Gullman and all these guys. List is all these long type of Yeah, well, we get, it just takes a while. Yeah, but I feel like we it, just... It didn't come out of the womb there. That's true. That's you know? true. 
There's something about, uh, yeah, no, I have one that like I had forever and I just finished it like a week ago. Wow. Just, I, I forgot, you know, I, I was like, how do I end this? And I, dude, I didn't write it, I riffed it. It's like sometimes you just have to keep saying the joke and, 100%. and you talk the punchline and what you say naturally is the punchline. Sometimes. Yeah, and you need to see it with fresh eyes because sometimes you stare at it for, you know, weeks and weeks and it's almost like saying a word over and over where it loses its meaning. And then after like, Two months, you're like, oh, I can go this way. Yeah. Should we do one more? Or do you want to? You want to save some? Uh, Let's see if I got a short one. All right, hit me with something. When I was a kid, my mom used to buy me uh, books on ADD. Oh, it's that's like hilarious. books. I could re I could read a tweet. That's funny. Like books on ADD, and then they sent me to a seven hour ADD seminar, which is true. Because mm. they were like, you need a. And I'm like, that's not how you beat ADD right you don't just force me to listen and you're like and uh my friend said you know you can't cure ADD with a class it's like being gay you can't that's what I was gonna show get. a gay guy pictures and like of hot women like cu cured yet yeah <laughs> you know so and I was like yeah it's not at all like being gay I think it's pretty messed up to uh to compare what I have to an incurable disorder <laughs> that's a good line all right try that i was gonna say uh it's like trying to cure your son of gay and sending him to fire island we're yeah. gonna send you conversion camp that's great but it's not gonna work in like that's the true. uk or whatever you know we we don't get uh add people we don't get a parade mm -hmm. even if we did we wouldn't have the focus to get one done i think add is like uh something like like add is like is not like being gay, you know. It's like I, I can I can uh, I can control this with medication, <laughs> you know. I can't. <laughs> that's that's that, good. Maybe that's not shitting on him. Yeah, like I don't think there's a guy a gay guy in Hamas. Like, all right, time to take my meds. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got to turn it on again today. And you can think of a funny pill name, you yeah. know, like anti-gay or something. There's something there, right? Yeah, and I feel like the joke's close. All you got to do is find the, you got the premise. You got I haven't tried line. it yet, so I hope oh, okay. I'll try it tonight. If you can get the gay, what the gay comparison in the middle, I feel like it's done. Yeah, there's um, something there. Yeah, because gay is too perfect. It's perfect because you could use other ones like stop drinking, send him to a bar, whatever. But the gay with the turn later is great. The disorder yeah. that was a riff, man. I, oh, really? Yeah, I just I no, I tried that first part on stage. I didn't try the second part. So I tr I just tried up to like where you guys laughed the uh, disorder part. That was a riff, and I was like. uh it got a pop. I was like, all right. I was just like, how do I fucking end this? Yeah. Well, what's the gayest place on earth? Broadway? It's pretty gay. Yeah. I'm trying to think. But we love it. <laughs> the, maybe just say the Pride Parade. Yes. You know, like sending your, uh, your <clears throat> son to conversion camp at the Pride Parade. Gotta be something gayer than that. Like, where are dudes really get? Oh, maybe jail. Sauna. 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 Call the back. Rocks. Well yes, done. the rocks. Then that could lead into your sauna bit. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a sauna bit, actually. Oh, okay. I have a new sauna bit. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. What else you got? Uh, I, that's my thing. I have a couple that are new that are just working, so I don't want to bring on shit that's working. I know, I know. I, and I feel bad giving away that uh, that Muslim punchline, but... Um, yeah, but whatever. I feel like sometimes when people hear it at the show, and they, when I talk to them after, they're like, no, it's cool hearing it on the that's show. That's true. But yeah, I do. I'm the same way. I like it all to be brand new to them when they see it. All right, this one's quick, and then we'll wrap it up because we got a, a guest coming in later. But um, all right, so with all all these flight delays, cancels, everything, I'm at the airport just screaming at these uh, these clerks or whatever you call them, the United guy at the desk, and then you realize it's not his fault. the The plane is having maintenance issues or this weather. And I'm missing my gig, but I'm yelling at some stranger. I'm like, this isn't fair to this guy. He just works there. So then I thought the airport should hire a guy just to get yelled at. Just hire a guy just to take abuse, take a verbal lashing. I like this already. And yeah. get a guy who's in like S&M sadomasochist shit. So you're like, oh. you piece of shit. Yeah, I missed Christmas because of you, you worthless motherfucker. He's like, this is the best job I ever had. You know, and he's got the desk there, so you can't even see it. I like this. But then that, that part kind of does well. But I am just doing this, so I'm like, are they just laughing at this? But yeah, that's funny. Okay, and, and I love I love the idea that they just like bring out the gimp. Yeah, yes, bring out the gimp. <laughs> the gimp. I'm gonna say that. Bring out the, bring out the Delta gimp. <laughs> mm. Mm. You piece of shit. Yeah, you. Must Is this any way to treat a customer? Right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, it needed some kind of ending. I so I, I thought, how can I wrap this up? How can I twist this? And then I thought. 
Maybe the guy gets too into it, and then you you start apologizing. You know, he's like, "Tell me I'm worthless," and I'm like, "You know what? Keep the voucher. Uh, I'll take the train. <laughs> I'll take Amtrak." Delta's like, "Wow, this is paying for itself." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep the refund. It's all it's all good. That's fucking good. Oh, all right. That's, that's great. funny. Okay. I was laughing in the setup. I mean, that's like to me, that's hilarious. All right, I'll, I'll try. Is that it. hitting? Uh, the the first part is you know like this. You piece of shit, you motherfucker. And he's like, this is the best job I've ever had. That crushes. But I am just doing this and going, the best job I've ever had. So I don't know. I feel kind of cheap doing that, but it kills. Yeah, I think there's a lot there, dude. Okay. Get, get, bring out the gimp. There's fun stuff. Bring out there. the gimp is a great great addition. Um, <laughs> got the Delta gimp. <laughs> funny. That's hilarious. Uh, Yeah. Damn, that's, that's solid. And it's a fun idea because you want to yell at the guy, but... You, he, you know, it's just some random dude from Queens. Like, I'm, why am I? Why is he in charge of all of United? I'm also shocked. Whenever I know your angle is not going to be, you know, hack. I always know that, but like, it's it's still refreshing to hear an airline bit that you're like, oh, I haven't heard that. Oh, great! All you right. Know what I mean, like, it's just I, I just like that. I'll take it. Well, what what are you showing us here? What is this? Uh, we got a song sent in from some fans. So oh, let's hear it. All right, play it. A noise. On top of the world with value views. You will picture perfect girl. I'm Sally Cues. Under the influence of positive. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. I recommend that you deposit it. I'm really funny, easy money on a danger field. Same time tomorrow, cause you love me when I pay for meals. I want to kiss in the shows, I try to be aloof. I am a drifter doing shows high up on the roof. I never lose, you could call me Winnie. Feel like Travolta playing BGs, walking through the city. Everything cool game, but I'm making loose change. You're going with some rude shade by telling me you've changed. And that's a joke, and I would know it's how I make a living. I am a pro, and you should know before I play the building. Watch me kill the bill I fi- I thought this was about us. That was those were like all my specialties just named. Oh, he did. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't hear all the lyrics. He said Salakus before. Then he said you've changed. Same time tomorrow. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. I was like, I thought it was about the the pod. Go. And just like we should, we drink to bring the funk out. This is fun. Yeah. And yeah, we can play this with like your old friend. What do you say? Time to be another story of a Tuesday. I'm eating this week like I'm going out to lunch. I'm always in the soup, cracking jokes, that's nuts. I know oh, that storm and Norman. <laughs> right. Call me Norman. Kicking down the doors of comedy. I'm not the doorman. You sure, man? <laughs> we in the center, not the comedy store, man. The floor plan only makes sense to a core fan. I'm old fashioned. Core sipping fan. apple, take a cat. Such a pet peeve when my vision starts to break the black. Only happens when it don't be top shelf. Only seems to happen when you don't be yourself. You oh, don't say, hey, I don't have a full of cup. If she look good from the stage, I'ma pull her off. If I make her laugh, I will jot it. Like it's saved in drafts, I still got it. Oh, I like it. That's great. I take it all back. I, I'm such an old honky. I was. I missed all the lyrics. I, I probably would have missed about the same time tomorrow. I got this. I was like, oh, God, these are. I know this. Wow. Well done. Meta noise. Very cool. What does it say? Kate. I can't read it. Caden, and. Kadem and K Das. It's two twins from. Ooh. I'm not I sure like it. From, where are they from? I'm not sure. But I, Meta I'm, Noise on Instagram. M E T A. N O I Z. Check them out. Good be good lyrics. I uh, like it. I'm I'm sorry. I questioned it. Um, follow us both. Punch up dot live slash Mark Norman. Punch up uh, dot live slash Sam Morell. Oh yeah. And uh, we're posting stuff on there. We're we got our dates in there. Mark, where are you gonna be? I'm all over the road. This comes out in January 2041, but. Uh, I'll be in Colorado Springs, Colorado, Fort Collins, St. Louis, Missouri, Atlanta, Georgia, Vancouver, British Columbia, Orlando, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Portland, Oregon, London, Ontario, Toronto. We just added a show, so let's sell that puppy out. Meridian Hall is awesome. Really? Yeah, it's sick. Oh, never been. I'm excited. Uh, Newport, Rhode Island for that uh, Rogue Comedy Fest, uh, Monterey, California, Oakland, Winnipeg. 
And uh, Edmonton, Cleveland, doing hilarities, getting back into a... I'm trying to sprinkle some club dates in. I'm doing hilarities, too. Oh, nice. That's like my favorite. One of the best. Such good, such a good great club. food, great room. Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, Wichita, Kalamazoo, Chicago, Chicago Theater. So let's try to sell that puppy out. What do you got there, Sloppy Jalopy? Um, I'm, I'm uh, going to Europe, so I got... Uh, yeah, I got London, I believe, September 18th. Then, uh, then we got... Oh... Niagara Falls first, right? Okay, uh -oh. Niagara Falls, uh, September 13th. Oh, the good side. Yeah. We got London the 18th. The 22nd, we got Belfast. Then we got Dublin. Paris just added a show. Amsterdam just added a show. Copenhagen. Uh, Oslo. Stockholm. And then, yeah, I'm back. And the club's going to add some more clubs. We got uh, Hilarities, November 21st through 23rd. I'm going to add some more clubs, though. Need, need to get back to it. And then big theater tour next year. And uh, buy some Bodega Cat at bodega, uh, bodegacatwhiskey.com. I don't know. I can't speak today. I'm off today. Bodegacatwhiskey.com. And, uh, you know, we've had some great times with Wingus here. We're in, Winnie always bringing the heat on this pod. Oh, yeah. You no, know, you guys love Winnie. We got... Uh, Who doesn't? We got we to look back at some of the greatest moments with Winnie. Oh. Let's, let's take a little look back to all the great moments Winnie has provided us on yes, this podcast. Yes, please. In memoriam. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Sorry. You back off, Norman. <laughs> Mini Winnie's going strong. And uh, let's take a look. Oh, this is a good I'm one. improv over the weekend with her, and the staff's like, Winnie? Like, they fucking know her from the <laughs> We got a lick. That's legal here. She's all. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at her. Look at that guy. My the father, the constant, hero. The little. constant licks, dude. She's like, she heard you shitting on pugs on your pod. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. I love pugs. I, I love pugs. That with me. They're, they're, they're a tough hand because they're always like this. <laughs> yeah, they're the best. Fuck, I like Man. it. Fuck. I love them. God, she's a sweetheart. No, it's like hanging out awesome. with Donnelly. Sean! Winnie killing. Oh, man, that thing's got a fucked up face. I <laughs> One eye, dude. A bit of really I didn't get. I didn't get a good look at Honestly, it. That eye is fucking eye so scary. Looking, I thought I was going to learn my future. <laughs> she, uh, from they found her on the streets, man. In the LA streets. From Compton. Yeah. And how long have you had this dog? Compton. My girlfriend's dog. She got her at like nine. And oh, nice. She got when the dog was nine. Yeah, and she's seventeen. She's hanging. What do you say? Well, thanks for listening, guys. We love you. And Wait, oh, you, oh, one more. Finale. We got one more. Yeah, we got to do this one. It's a noble, or you go to any. <laughs> <laughs> You go to the bookstore and it's like already trying to make up for it. I love it. The dog's a Kobe fan. What can I say? Love it. You guys are the best. Keep listening, and we'll we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Good night and good luck. On top of the world with values, you a picture perfect girl. I'm Sally Q's under the influence. I'm positive. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. I recommend that you deposit it. I'm really funny, easy money on a danger field. Same time tomorrow, cause you love me when I pay for meals. I wanna kiss her in the shows, I try to be aloof. I am a drifter doing shows high up on the roof. I never lose, you could call me Winnie. Feel like Travolta playing PG's walking through the city. Everything too game, but I'm making loose change. You going with some rude shade by telling me you change. And that's a joke, and I would know it's how I'll make a living. I am a pro and you should know before I play the building. Watch me kill the bill I filled. I'm hot shit. Scott I spilled, but